every single minute of it, I was really feeling the the women that I'd spoke to had been through this. And it was always like, that was like the bigger purpose for all of it in a way, you know, where women spoke to me who had, some of them had never been able to speak to anyone about it or had never been asked or felt like it wasn't something that anyone would want to hear, you know, and that really surprised me because I was there sort of asking questions and really wanting to know. And some of them said, it's been so many years that anyone's even asked me. And so there was such a silence around that, that it felt like such a female story and it felt so important for women who, you know, it, so many have been through this or or even to do to do a birth on screen where, you know, I, I was saying that the other day, like uh, we've seen so many men die on screen, but we haven't seen women give birth when like it's the most universal thing that will connect us. So that feeling was with me all the time. And as you said, so harrowing. And I can't bring her back. How are you? We just don't have answers for her. Very sorry for your loss. Thank you. As awful as it is for the woman, Society doesn't really allow men to grieve. They have to be strong and silent. Um, and I was wondering if you and Shia maybe discussed uh, the different way society expects other genders to handle this issue. Hmm. I, I know. I know exactly what you mean. And that it was really interesting from speaking to the families, because, for example, one woman I spoke to called Kelly, her husband, Nick, and her had like a totally different experience. And it was really difficult for them to understand each other because languages of grief for everybody is so different. And I don't think we're ever able to predict or know how all of us will react. And especially with this, because it does feel like, you know, uh, the woman has carried the baby for nine months. And then, so her relationship with the baby is completely different, I guess, to the father. And that, um, but weirdly, it felt, and, and I can only talk about it from me inside, it felt really unifying because even though I have obviously never experienced that, nowhere near that level of grief, we've all been through times where we've lost something really precious to us or someone, you know, a person or a relationship or whatever it is. And and those days are so hard and so lonely. Why well, are you trying and, to disappear um, with kid? Because we don't have a kid. I think it's the courage to go through it on your own and to find your own way every day you know in those months and try and come out of it in some way changed you have to face this. i am facing this i am facing it i am facing this Margaret, that makes me think about the um that i guess that it always felt to me i remember when i was reading i was like god this is such a female story because it is where like women might be expected to be in deference or like or or um, smaller than they are or you know it felt like this is one woman's journey from uh, thinking that she she knows who she is and she has this, has always had this mother who's had such expectations about exactly who she should be and she should never fail at anything and she has to be strong no matter what and she finds her own way you know her whole life is completely shattered everything that resembled her old, old life is like disintegrates around her and she has no way of even being able to know how to, and shouldn't really know how to, how to fix it. She just relinquishes all of it. And then at the end, she finds her own voice and her own way and says, oh, this is who I am. This is, this is me. And it was so inspiring, you know, and made me think a lot about how, um, like the female courage, you know, and female resilience. And I felt so proud to be a part of it for that reason. And I really, really hope it speaks to women. That's my, was always my biggest intention with it. This is about me. This is about my life. This is me. I've been working with Sands, this charity for, for stillbirth and neonatal death. And they, they said yesterday, they told me that 54% of people know someone or have been through it. That's over half the population. And that is huge. And yet it's never spoken about. So I'm so pleased to be here with you. And I feel like it really matters. It does. Thank you so much. <laughs>